Hi there. Welcome to the Aquarium Online Academy. I'm Stacy here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and we are going to be taking a look at a mackerel today. So a mackerel is a type of fish. Um, we're actually going to be doing a dissection. We're looking at the anatomy of this fish. And in order for us to do that, we have to have one, right? So I actually do have a couple of specimens here with me. Um, these mackerel, it's kind of interesting, were uh, originally tagged to be food for the animals here at the aquarium, but we snagged a couple of them so we can take a look and explore together today. Now, if you have any questions about the mackerel or anything that you would like to share with us, I encourage you to do so. All you need to do is send us a text, and the text number is right here in front of me, 562 286 188 Three, eight, all right. And uh, for those of you who do need to ask for permission to text, please do because texting rates may apply. Now, if you are watching this after the fact and it is not a live program, you're still welcome to send in things. In fact, we really encourage it. But you'll just have to email us. And that email address is right down there too. It's live at lbaop.org. So now you have the best ways to contact us. And uh, we may as well get going with our dissection. Now, fish, right? What even makes a fish a fish? How do we know what a fish is? Now, if we take a look here in this exhibit, this is an example of our blue, or sorry, this is an example of a kelp forest habitat. So in the ocean, there's lots of different habitats, lots of different places for animals to live. This one in particular is an example of a kelp forest because as you can see, there's lots of kelp. For those of you who don't know what kelp is, that's all the seaweed that you see here. So this like seaweed with the really long, broad things that look kind of like uh, kind of like leaves. Those are the blades of the kelp. That is giant kelp. Oh, and that's a barracuda. <laughs> but we have lots of different fish in here. Barracuda are one of the kinds of bony fish. We also have sardines, and we even have some mackerel as well. Now, we also have some much larger ones that seem to be a little out of the picture, but that's okay. Now, all of these fish that you see here have stuff in common. That's why they fall under that umbrella called a fish. But what is it? What do you think makes a fish a fish? Do they all look like this? Well, we know they don't all look like that, right? Like many of us know clownfish, and clownfish don't really look like that. Many of us have heard of eels before, and eels are fish, but they don't really look like that. So fish are this is like this really giant broad group, and there's so much variety within that group. But the things that they have in common are a backbone and gills. So a backbone uh, or a spine of some sort. Now, for those of you who have never seen the inside of a fish before, we're going to cut into it in just a minute, but here I have a skeleton of a fish, and you can see its backbone. Now, this is the interesting thing. For us, our backbone is just right here down the center, right? And if you kind of bend a little bit and feel, you can even feel maybe the bumps that are there. That is your backbone. For a fish, it's a little different. It's not the thing on the very top ridge. It's actually this thing that's kind of in the center. This is the backbone. I know, bear with me, a little bit odd, but that's the backbone. And the things that you see coming from the backbone around right here, those are the ribs, just like us. Now, uh, the other thing is gills, right? So let me go ahead and take a look at our fish so we can see those gills. All right, so this is a mackerel dissection, meaning we are going to be looking at a Pacific mackerel. That's the type of fish it is. Now, the Pacific mackerel is, um, is a pretty cool fish. Now, this one right here is probably just over a foot long or so. They can get to be bigger, about twice the size, actually, um, when it's full, full grown, about as big as they can be. Um, so this one here is kind of a juvenile. It's, it's still developing. Um, but again, this was going to be food for our animal friends here at the aquarium, but instead we're using it for our exploration. Now, we said that it has backbone. We saw that skeleton just a moment ago. And the other thing is the gills. Now, where are the gills on this fish? I think many of us are pretty accustomed to gills on fish, right? It's this like little flap right here. Well, this flap itself is called an operculum. It's actually a protective flap because the gills are just inside. So if I lift this here, you can actually see those gills down in there. 
Now, what's really cool about these gills is we can actually cut out the gills so we can take a better look at what the gills uh, actually look like. So I'm going to trim out this gill here for us to see. So here's the gill. Now you can see here that it's, it's pretty red. That red color is because it does have oxygenated blood as part of it. So just like for us, right, when we breathe, you're breathing in, the air is going into your lungs and your lungs have parts of it that take the oxygen out of the air and then it puts that into our blood and then it gets circulated around to our body because all of our cells, all the parts of our body need that blood in order to survive. It, need, it really needs the nutrients and the oxygen that that blood is giving it. So what we have here with these gills is a slightly different structure that's used to take the, um, the oxygen out of water. So yes, the oxygen is actually in water. They're not breathing water so much as they're breathing the oxygen in the water. Just like we breathe air, but we don't actually just breathe air. We need the oxygen, right? So it's kind of the same thing. So that's what all these little parts are right here. These are called gill filaments. And these gill filaments here are designed to um, get the oxygen from that water. Now here's a really interesting thing. I can bend the gill a little and you can see some parts sticking out now, right? If I just left the gill, that's what it would look like. As I bend it a little bit, you see some bits. So these things right here are called gill rakers. And I know that you can't really touch them, <laughs> not, through the, not through the screen at least, right? But these gill rakers here are a little bit stiff. And that little bit of stiffness is actually a really great thing. Just like the name says, the gill rakers actually rake things. It rakes water. And this is a good thing because if the water has particles in it, which water typically does, if there are some semi-large particles in it, the rakers will actually catch the particles before the particles hit the filaments. Okay. That way these filaments don't get damaged. The other thing that's really cool about these rakers is that they can kind of act almost like a cage for the animals that like to eat small animals that you kind of filter a little bit out of the water. So here's kind of an interesting thing. Some animals use their gill rakers to help them capture food. All right. Has anybody here ever heard of a whale shark or a basking shark? Whale sharks and basking sharks are actually fish because remember, fish have to have a backbone. Even though it's not made of bone, they do have a spine. Um, and they need to have gills and they definitely have gills. And all of the gills that are right here are what they use to capture their diet. They actually open their mouth, the water goes into their mouth, it goes out of the gills, and those gill rakers rake out plankton that's inside, uh, inside that water, and then they're able to capture it with their gill rakers, close their mouth, and swallow. So the gill rakers actually help them to catch food, which is kind of incredible. They don't really use teeth at all. So sharks that don't use teeth for feeding. All right, so this one right here, that's a whale shark, but let's get back to our mackerel. So now we know what those gill rakers do. The last bit of the gill that I want to look at is called, uh, is called the gill arch, and that's this line right here that you see. So this line right here, it's just structure. It gives the gills, um, basically, let me lighten that up. That might be a little easier to see there. So this right here gives it structure so it doesn't just ball up because we definitely don't want the gills to ball up. We want it to be able to get a lot of water flowing through it. So that arch gives it that structure to do so. All right. So we know for sure that this fish is definitely a fish. I think that's what we've covered so far, right? It has a backbone and it has gills. So what else makes this fish different? Now, the rest of the things about this fish are stuff that are maybe specific to this fish, maybe kind of uh, overarching lots of different fish, um, but not all fish, okay? So we're gonna look at, uh, at this fish right here to kind of give us an example of what general fish look like, but there are some things that are different for other fish too. One of the things that I often hear is that uh, fins make a fish. And it's true that most fish do have fins, have true fins like this. And this one is called a ray-finned fish. 
And that's because if you take a look at these fins up close, especially, let's see if we can do that. There we go. Aha. You can see all those lines there. Those lines are almost like little bones. And that's what gives these fins rays. Okay, so there's that structure to the fins. Now they do have different fins and they're used for different things. The fin that I zoomed up on here, this is called a pectoral fin. It's because it's connected to pectoral muscles. Now uh, we actually have pectoral muscles too. Okay, that's kind of what our arms are more or less attached to. It kind of helps with that movement. Um, so that's their side fins, these pectoral fins. And for this fish, the pectoral fins are used to help them steer when they're swimming. Now, what it uses to, to propel itself is mostly its tail. So we can see its tail here. It's also called a caudal fin. And just like the pectoral fin right here, you'll notice there are rays, right? There's all these lines. So kind of bony rays that are part of this tail. So the tail moves side to side, just like this, and then it pushes it through the water. Now, another cool thing about this tail is you'll notice the shape of it. Do all fish have this shaped tail? Not really. This tail here is like a V shape. And so this fish is going to be a fairly fast fish. It's able to um, wiggle its tail really quickly and the V shape of this tail gives it some power, but it also moves very easily through water. There are some fish out there that have a slightly different shaped tail, maybe something that looks more like a big fan. There's even some fish that have a tail that looks almost like a heart. And those tails are a little bit different. Those fish are going to move a little differently. So this is the California State Marine fish, the Garibaldi. And you'll see this tail. It is kind of similar in that it does come to a V here. But do you see how it's more like a heart shape? So this is not as fast a fish. It also doesn't have to swim quite as much. So the fin shapes are really um, going to tell you a lot about how this animal is moving around. Okay, so we can see there's the pectoral fin. Do you see the rays in this one too? So we have the pectoral fin here. We have the caudal fin here. Okay, so just like our mackerel, but you'll notice that they are different shapes, especially the top. Do you notice this giant fin right here? This is their dorsal fin. Dorsal is the top side. Um, so uh, this is their dorsal fin. And that's a good thing to kind of give them some stability. They don't really have to... Uh, move very fast very much so it can be a little bit looser, a little bit wigglier. Let's go take a look at the mackerel again and try to find the dorsal fin. Do you see it? No. Nah. Well, that's interesting. Well, here's the thing. It actually is quite streamlined right now, right? Not having that dorsal fin, but it does have it. It's actually folded down on its body. Look at this. That's the dorsal fin. So it's actually quite large for this fish. And not only does it have this one, but it actually has another little one down here. Oh, my, my glove is in the way. Thanks, glove. Or hand, I guess. So, um, so there's a little one right here. Maybe my tweezers can help us. There we go. So there's that. And then what's really kind of neat is if we zoom into the tail region, the caudal fin region, do you notice all these itty bitty ones? These are finlets. That means they're like baby fins. So there's these itty bitty little fins. All of these fins here on the top of the body are helping to give it stability as it swims. What I mean by stability is that this is a fish that's kind of streamlined like this, right? It almost is in a way football shaped. And if you are football shaped, if you can imagine a football moving very quickly through the air, if somebody threw it, it spirals. Because of the shape of it and, and the physics and everything involved with um, fluid dynamics and shape, it spirals. And that's exactly what would happen to this fish, which is not so good for the fish. So those dorsal fins are going to help it so it doesn't have that spiral action. All right. Now, that's also why it has the, the fins kind of on the bottom here as well. So you'll notice there's some fins down here. There's some fins down here. So there's a lot of fins to this fish, and all of them are really going to help it uh, to swim. Another thing that a lot of people say about fish is that they have scales. 
right? Well, these scales are kind of interesting. Let's get a really, really close look here. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to darken it just a touch. All right. So now you can kind of see the skin of this fish, right? Well, fish, not all fish, but most fish do have scales. And the scales of a fish are really, really helpful because they're going to give this fish some protection. In some ways, it's like having armor on. So for us, we have skin and our skin actually does protect us, right? You bump into something and it's like, ah, I bumped into something, but it doesn't hurt you. Not really. And that's because your skin is providing protection. So their skin does the same thing. Their scales are like added protection. And then another thing are there's a lot of parasites in the water and the parasites like to link on. Parasites for us are things like fleas, ticks, mosquitoes. Nobody likes those, right? They suck our blood. It gets real itchy, all of that. Well, it's the same thing in the ocean. There are parasites in the ocean that do the same thing to fish. So having scales on them can protect them from some types of parasites. It's again, that added armor. So we know that some fish do have scales, but not all fish. Another really cool thing uh, that I noticed here, and so I'm going to make a transition, is this line. Did you notice this line too? This line is a really cool thing. It's called a lateral line because it moves laterally on this fish's body. So this lateral line here is um, actually full of pores. So like we have pores, you can sometimes see it on your face. And they have a little hair-like structure and kind of like some little gel-like stuff in there too. And what's really neat about that lateral line is that that is one of their senses. That's a sense they have that's a little different than us. So what happens is as water moves around these pores, they can sense how that water is moving. The lateral line is what's helping these fish swim in a school. So we have schooling fish. Have you ever noticed a lot of especially small fish swim like this all together and they're really good. They can move very quickly and they don't even crash into each other. It's to me quite of incredible. I feel like if we tried to do that with each other, we would end up bumping into each other, almost guaranteed, right? And sometimes that does happen with fish, but that lateral line, and you can almost even see it in this picture here, but that line helps them to sense the water movement, uh, the pressure changes as other fish move nearby, so they don't crash into each other. So that is one of their senses. In a way, it's kind of like a, the sense of touch. And they do respond to touch. So if you were to touch a fish, it would know that you're touching it. Uh, other senses that these fish might have are very similar to us. Okay, so they can feel touch. They can see, right? Let's go back to the fish. So they definitely have an eye. And that eye is what's going to help them to see. Woohoo, look at that eye. All right, so, um, so the fish do see fairly well. Now, fish eyes are better for looking at things underwater, not so much in the air unless they have very special eyes, which a few do, um, but they do see. Some fish can smell. Now, smell and taste are really similar. They're, they're basically detecting chemicals in the water. So, so smell and taste are real, real similar. Um, even for us, in a way, smell and taste are similar. Have you ever had a stuffy nose before and you can't really taste very well? Yeah, because they're, they're kind of connected. But then, wait, do fish have tongues? Have you ever thought about that before? Does a fish have a tongue? Shall we look? All right, my fishy friend. Open wide, buddy. Uh, let's see. It's pretty dark in there. Let's see if we can zoom it in. And maybe make it a little bit lighter. Sorry if the uh, the white blows out a little bit there, but there we go. Look at that little tongue. It's itty bitty and it's kind of grayish, but it's there. So yes, they do have a tongue. The other thing, I don't know if you noticed this, but they have a bunch of itty bitty little teeth too. It's a little bit bumpy and my glove does actually get caught on it. Okay, so yes, sense of taste. Okay, so we know their senses. They can see, they can taste, they can touch, they kind of smell. What about hearing? Do you see any ears on this fish? Not the same as us, yeah? So instead, this fish can actually hear, but all of the things are internalized. So um, they don't really look like us. They don't have ears that hang out like us. So that's really interesting. 
Now, uh, we can tell a lot about a fish just by looking at the outside of it, right? This fish here has some really cool coloration to it. Did you notice this beautiful kind of pattern? In fact, uh, this pattern is pretty particular to mackerel. And uh, some of you may have eaten saba sushi before. If you've eaten saba sushi, this may look very familiar to you. Um, so this is a very particular pattern, but what it's really good for is this dark top actually blends in with a dark ocean floor when it's swimming like this. Just imagine a dark ocean floor below. If you were a predator from above, it would blend in very nicely, right? Now, what if you were a predator from below? Well, that means you would see its belly. And look how bright and shiny that is. That's very similar to the surface of the ocean. So if you were looking up towards the surface of the ocean and saw this against the sunny uh, surface of the ocean, it actually blends in pretty well. This is called counter shading, and a lot of animals have this counter shading. If you've been watching our programs, you have probably heard of it before because so many ocean animals have this kind of coloration. All right, so we've looked a lot at the external anatomy, right? Now it's time to look at the internal anatomy. So we're going to take a look at the inside of this fish. Now, for those of you who uh, maybe don't want to see the inside of the this fish, you can absolutely turn away. You can turn the program off if you uh, so desire. But since we are looking at the inside, it is not the most beautiful part of this fish. I think it's fascinating, but it is not beautiful per se. I guess that is beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So maybe it is beautiful to you. So uh, it's just not going to look like the outside of a fish. So I'm going to move my fishy friend here out of the way. I actually um, already cut open a fish for us to see. So this, I just cut the side of the fish. I'll zoom it out so you can kind of see what that cut looks like. I basically just took a cross section here, or not cross section, but like a, like a fillet out of it. In fact, if any of you eat fillets of fish, this is basically what you're eating. That's the part that I cut out. Um, so that's, that's not necessary at this point. One of the things that's kind of neat to see though is you can see some of the bones in the fish. So I did have to cut away the ribs um, so that way we can see the innards. Okay, so here we go. This is the inside of the fish. I'm going to zoom back in again so we can get a better look. And I'll adjust the lighting a little bit too. It's a little bit dark in there. Now, can you see structures that are slightly different than other structures? Eh, kind of a little bit, right? Um, it's a little bit tough because things are very similar in, in color, um, but we can actually point out a few different things. Now, um, earlier we were talking about the gills and how the gills do that oxygen exchange in the blood. So their hearts are actually positioned very close to their gills, and that is just going to be a lot more efficient. So if I was to, uh, Take a look. Remember the gill opening, that operculum, right? That's this thing right here. Okay. And so you can see the gills on the inside. This right here is the heart. So this dark triangle is the heart of this fish. Now, uh, mackerel, like the Pacific mackerel we have here, have a two-chambered heart. It's almost like having half of our heart. Um, but it also has a couple more parts to it that's different than ours. And so all of those parts work together to help the blood just get pushed through the entire body. Okay, so now we know the heart, uh, the circulatory system, basically. Now, what about the digestive system? So we know that they eat. There's the mouth, right? And the mouth is really interesting because not only does it open like this. Oh, hey, look at that tongue. <laughs> Good view, little one. Okay, but the mouth can actually open larger. Can you see that? Isn't that incredible? And that really big mouth opening allows them to eat things that are bigger than you would anticipate. So when they are very young and much smaller, they're going to eat things that they can fit in their mouth, like zooplankton, animal plankton. But this one right here, because that mouth is so enormous, it's going to eat small fish. And really, it's after almost any small fish that it can eat, all right? So after they eat the food here, 
It goes into their esophagus, kind of like a throat, and it goes into their body. Now, from there, it goes into their stomach, and we have a stomach right here. So this, this thing right here is a tube. Let's see, let me push that up, sorry. Uh, right here is the tube that is their stomach, okay? So that's where the food would go to digest. Now, do you see all of this right here? There's a lot of little lines involved, right? All of this right here, this is called a pyloric cica, and basically this is used for digestion as well. There's so many lines because there's a ton of surface area, so that way the nutrients can be absorbed from the food. For example, for us, we have our small intestines. Our small intestines are all wound around like crazy, so as the food passes through, we can get the nutrients from that food, and that's basically what this is here. So... After it uh, is digested completely, it gets all the nutrients that it can, it goes to the bathroom, and there is a small opening on the bottom. Let me actually get my other fish so you can see. So there is this small opening on the bottom. This is it right here called a cloaca. And the cloaca is an all-purpose out hole. <laughs> that basically is where they go to the bathroom, and it is also where they lay eggs, if they were to lay eggs. Now, what's really interesting here is this is actually a female fish. And we don't always know because these aren't quite full grown yet, so they haven't totally matured. But do you see this flap right here? This uh, is a flap of eggs. It's, it's basically a whole bunch of eggs all attached to each other. And they have one on this side, and they also have one on the other side here so this right here that is another flap of eggs so they have basically two sections of eggs here and they would lo lay those eggs from that cloaca now the eggs take uh, maybe four or five days to hatch or so and then when those babies hatch they are basically like see-through little teeny tiny mackerel so um, they are itty bitty um, and eventually will grow into something much larger like the one that we have here now, one more thing that is really interesting here on the inside that I would love for us to explore is actually, um, I'm going to have to remove the eggs here. So let's get my scissors. Okay, so this right here, do you see it's kind of shiny almost? This right here is actually a bag of air. It's called an air bladder. Now, this air bladder is really interesting. The fish can, um, can add pressure to this little bag or release the pressure from the bag, and this allows the fish to float. So this is actually a really good thing because if the fish had to swim all the time, let's take a look at like uh, the school of mackerel. Um, if the fish had to swim all the time, it would be using a lot of energy in order, to, uh, in order to swim and stay kind of at the area of the ocean that it would want to be. So if the fish wanted to stay in this general vicinity and didn't have an air bladder, it would have to work to stay here. But a lot of fish out there, not all, but a lot of them have that air bladder, that little bag of air inside their body, and that allows them to more or less just float. That means they are more energy efficient, which is a good thing, right? If you use a lot of energy, it means you need to find more food so that way you have more energy. And sometimes finding food can be a challenge. So being efficient in energy usage is actually going to be a really helpful thing for these fish. So having that bag of air in there is actually helping this fish uh, so it doesn't have to use as much energy. So that uh, air bladder is very important. And in fact, if you pierce the air bladder, like I'm gonna do in just a second, it will just disappear. See? completely disappeared because it was just a bag of air, basically. Now, one more thing uh, I forgot to talk about for their digestive system. They do have a liver. This right here is the fish's liver. So you can kind of see uh, it's, it is lobed very similarly to our liver. Right there. All right. So that is basically the inside of a mackerel. Now, I hope that you've had some, uh, some fun 
<laughs> learning a little bit about mackerel. They are uh, they're a very good intro fish. And if any of you are interested in doing anything like this yourself, you actually can. Um, there are lots of fish that you can get from a market. And just like the one we have here that was food fish, it's a, it's a good one to start with, is some kind of food fish. And so you can take a look on the inside and see what you can find. It's actually really interesting in person. It doesn't translate quite the same over the screen, um, but at least you were able to see some of the things. Now, again, if you do have any questions that pop up, because you've watched this a little bit later, we do encourage you to send us an email. Oh, hi there, little fishy. Uh, we encourage you to send us the email to live at lbaop.org. Well, my friends, this actually does it for our online academy for the week. But we will be back again next week with more programs for our Summer Kids Club and more online academy uh, for you to explore with us. So thanks so much for joining us today, and we'll hope to see you next week. Bye.